Shortly after this museum opened, another closed for some major renovations. It's been 18 months now since Kansas City's Toy and Miniature Museum shut down to redesign its displays and take on a new identity. When they reopen on August 1st, it will be as the National Museum of Toys and Miniatures, and the focal point in their entryway will be a spinning metal ribbon <laughs> covered with playthings of all kinds. Producer videographer Julie Denishay has been watching as the world's only toy history mm. takes shape. We collected all the toys from the community, which we thought would be a great way to have the community provide an interactive element in the museum's kind of renovation process. We basically asked for toys that would fit into the palm of your hand. At the end, we ended up with 10 55-gallon barrels full of toys. So we collected all these toys, cleaned them, sorted them, and then Sarah went through and started to create scenes. This toy history is in the entrance of the museum and will greet all the visitors when they first arrive and hopefully it will attract their attention to scamper upstairs and see the rest of the exhibits of the toys. If you look on the toy history you'll see uh, toys from all over, they're donated from pe people around Kansas City and uh, we've kind of tried to get a nice uh, accumulation of toys to represent different genres of toys in different eras. The concept is based on a giant barber's pole. You, know, you see outside old-fashioned barber's shops that turn around, around, around. And that is the concept behind this huge, um, just over a hundred foot metal helix. I think what's interesting to me about the Toy Tisserie is it's a little bit of a microcosm of the experience here in the museum. People love our collection because it's so approachable. You have tiny things, which are the miniatures, and then you have toys, which are things that you played with as a kid. So anybody can come in and find something that they connect with. I like the way that children, they create their own worlds. So I remember as a child in my bedroom, I had rows of shells, and I used to like arranging little groupings of objects, and I loved arranging them and yeah, creating scenes. So um, I was in preparation for this job many, many years ago. <laughs> the, the process is you, you know, choose a toy and then yeah, drill in and attach a magnet. So very laborious. One had to pay attention 100% um, when working with each object. There's several different materials we're dealing with here. There's wood, there's plastic, there's ceramic, there's paper and card. And also there's the different ages of the toys that we're attaching. Some are old, vintage, and some are new. I think this is um, the most time-consuming thing I've ever worked on. Toy manufacturers weren't really designing toys for us to put them up on this twisting sculpture. The inconsistencies in materials and knowing what tool to use is probably the biggest obstacle, but it's, it's definitely something that we've overcome and um, over time through the project we've, we've kind of developed a rhythm where we could say, oh this thing is a, a squishy toy animal, we, we should probably shouldn't use the drill on this. At first I was, I was daunted by the scale of it. I mean, this is like a giant mural. I've never worked on something of this scale. And yeah, I do remember the first morning I walked in and was just surrounded by all these cardboard boxes and me. I just took a deep breath like, okay, let's just start with this box. I think probably in just about every scene, there's some little tiny detail that I love, and I think maybe there's quite a few little tiny details that people won't notice, or maybe will notice in time. I mean, like in the castle scene, just behind the stegosaurus, there's a little mouse hole, because every castle has a little mouse door. You know, it's not complete without a mouse door and a little mouse poking his nose out, which, you know, within the thousands of toys, that's kind of a crazy detail. And, that's, um, I guess, me. 
A lot of the toys were trying to have uh, directional movement, so uh, one toy will be moving in a certain direction to kind of help with the flow of the sculpture. There's an interaction of toys wanting to check out other scenes, and so that's kind of a lot of fun. It could always have more, but also it could maybe have less on there as well. So it's, yeah, it's a fine balance of um, knowing when to stop. That's the hard thing. Um, is yeah, knowing when it's time to just step back. I, I am going to have to just make myself go, stop, okay, that's it. You just pull up the drawbridge and <laughs> step away from the toy tissery, so you can let go. <laughs> hey, this, this has been a really cool opportunity to um, kind of pull back these, these memories, these toys. We're, we're drilling holes in these memories, but, uh, but we're also uh, being able to play again as an adult, which is a really cool thing. The tortisserie just kind of encapsulates what we hope is the experience. You see stuff on it, you start to remember, you, uh, it draws you upstairs, and you, know, you get to start to have a real, I guess you get to re-engage your childlike sense of wonder which is something that we're, we're all about here. It's been really fun and has let me revisit my childhood. So um, I, hope, I hope people enjoy it as much as I have.